Well, making the news certainly hasn't been difficult for it, but what about making a profit? Well, that's proved much harder for Twitter. But today, for the first time, the company has been able to announce a quarter in the black. It says its net profit was $91 million in the final quarter of 2017, up from a loss of $167 million for the same period last year. And that's because video advertising boosted revenue. But it wasn't all good news, as active monthly user numbers were below expectations at $330 million. That was up 4% on last year, but flat on the previous quarter. It did have a big impact on the share price, so it rose sharply at the open, and as you can see now, it's up by just shy of 16%. So has Twitter finally turned a financial corner, and how's the rest of the sector doing, given recent market turbulence? Well, with me is the manager of the Allianz Technology Trust, Walter Price. Walter, great to see you. Surprised at Twitter's first quarterly profit? I think it came about a quarter earlier than we were expecting, so uh, it's good to see for sure. Market uh, li like the results, obviously. I mean, the shares were up about 22% at one point, with, with a lot of shorts in the market on this one. I think there were a lot of shorts both in Twitter and Snap. They'd kind of given up on those two companies, and uh, they've both had good rebounds after their results. Obviously, it's been a turbulent time in markets. Nasdaq caught up in the uh, chaos as much as everyone else. <laughs> Do you think it's capable of being resilient and riding through these bumps? I do. I mean, I think business is very good right now. Uh, and I th think that's evidenced by, by Twitter's results and other companies' results that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. So I think that once we find a, a level that adjusts for these higher interest rates, that uh, the stocks will rebound from there. Now, the mood, as you say, obviously very good mainly, I guess, down to, or partly down to Donald Trump's tax cuts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the big five US tech companies have something like $500 billion kept overseas that they could now potentially repatriate. What are they going to do with all that money? Well, I think if uh, their stocks continue to decline, you'll see more buybacks. I mean, right. Apple said pretty clearly that they want to buy uh, their stock back. They think it's undervalued, and Google's been buying their stock back, so I think that we'll continue to see that, Microsoft as well. So. I, I, but I do think we could see some acquisitions too. Right. I mean, so you think they'll? I mean, Apple in particular. I mean, Apple accounts for more than half of that money, something like two hundred fifty-eight mm -hmm. billion dollars—a stunning sum of money. Right. I mean, they can't just buy their shares back with that, can they? Do you think they will splash out and buy other assets? I, I think they're looking to build out their uh, their services business, and so it wouldn't surprise me to see them make some smaller acquisitions in the services area, things like music or video. I think you could see some investments there. Because it's worth pointing out, the, the biggest acquisition Apple has ever done was when they bought Beats, which was $3 billion. That, that's it. They've never done anything really, really ground-shaking, have they? No, they, they always think it, the acquisitions are too expensive, I think, is their attitude, unless... Unless they're buying people or a position, uh, then they tend not to want to pay up. So how seriously are you taking these rumours that they might buy Netflix? Is that just pie in the sky? I think at uh, $100 billion for Netflix and you'd have to pay more than that, I think that's pie in the sky. I think that's, that's too much for Apple to stomach for their first big acquisition. One of the tech companies that has been spending money, of course, was Amazon, which last year bought Whole Foods. And today they've said they've announced the first proper integration of wholesale, uh, Whole Foods into their existing business. I mean, how nervous should the U.S. grocery multiples be about this? Well, I think they should be nervous over the intermediate term. I, I think short term Whole Foods is kind of struggling to find their, their relationship with Amazon and improve their technology. But Amazon is going to bring a lot of technology to the grocery industry, and I think that's going to shake it up. Incredibly restless business, isn't it, Amazon? Amazon is, uh, you know, they have this mantra, your, your profit is our opportunity. So <laughs> it's a scary thought. <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. And what about, I mean, lest we forget Facebook, obviously coming under increasing regulatory scrutiny. How, mm -hmm. As an investor, how nervous are you about that? I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. I think that Facebook was pretty candid in their conference call talking about the challenges that they have for this next year with GDPR and and uh, this concern about the health of social media. They're trying to make it healthier by focusing more on family and friends. But, uh, you know, I think this is a great executing company. They'll solve the problem, but, but it's, uh, they got a headwind for the next six months. All right, Walter Price from the Allianz Technology Trust. Good to see you, Sever. Thanks for joining.